I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to our next speaker. Jessica Perry is the Public Affairs Manager for Arizona Public Service for the West Valley. And she's been really busy this morning. She handles local government affairs and works with local chambers on behalf of APS. She's from Buckeye, so she's a West Sider, yay, and has previously worked for the Goodyear Mayor and Council, and prior to that for the Arizona Corporation Commission. I'm so excited to hear from Jessica about what APS is doing behind the scenes to keep us prepared for weather emergencies and heat emergencies, and I'm going to just turn it over to Jessica. As Jennifer said, I'm Jessica Perry. I do local government affairs and public affairs for APS. I'm so grateful to be here on behalf of APS. We'll go through several slides and I'll keep it pretty high level. It's a lot of information, but we'll have time for questions or I'll be outside or at our booth out in the other room if you have any additional. So to get started, I'll just talk a little bit about our service territory. APS is the largest and longest serving utility in Arizona. We cover a wide territory. It's very unique compared to other utilities across the nation. We have the desert, the heat that we deal with, the cold desert nights that not everybody is aware of, the snow, the mountains, we even serve down in the Grand Canyon. So our employees are constantly being trained to deploy, to work in various conditions. As you can see, we have a lot of assets that we have to take care of and it requires a lot of um, maintenance and inspections. And that is all required to serve our 1.3 million customers. The 1.2 of those 1.3 million customers are all residential. And so making sure that we have adequate supply of power to um, supply you all with power through the hot summer months is really what we plan for year round. I'll be talking a lot about last year because that's a lot of the information that I have on hand. We're updating at the moment for 2024. Today we're going down to the Arizona Corporation Commission to give them an update on how we're going to plan for the summer. So please be patient with all my numbers, but I'll be talking about this year as well. So to recap from last year, we all know it was hot. As you know, I was, I'm from Buckeye. I was melting. I was like, I'm gonna get out of here. But I didn't because it's home. But we saw a record breaking heat. 55 days of at or above 110 degrees, 35 of those, 31 of those were consecutive back in 1979 was when we saw our last record of 18 consecutive days. So really, our system was put to work last summer. All of the heat encourages customers to turn on their AC, turn it down, um, start using all their appliances because they're not outside, enjoying the beautiful weather. So making sure that we have the infrastructure ready to take on those high temps is what we plan for all year round. And, and part of that, why we're so successful in not um, preventing any dips in our reliability last summer, well, was because of our planning and our employees, but also our customers. It's important for us to have programs that customers can sign up for so we can, they can help us during those hot summer months, whether it's a residential customer or a business customer, and I'll go through those later on, but we really value the customers that put enroll on some of these programs that we offer in order to make sure that we're available, we are providing available power 100% of the time. Um, one good thing about last summer was the monsoon season was pretty inactive. We didn't, we usually replace about 100 or 340 poles a year because of weather. Last year it was down 100, so at least we got that going for us. <laughs> Our clean energy commitment is always on top of mind, but making sure that we're reaching 100% clean energy by 2050 um, without um, risking reliability and affordability to customers is how we're gonna get there. And retiring the coal by 2031 is important, is still on track, but we're gonna rely on, we couldn't make those goals without Palo Verde nuclear generation facility and our natural gas facilities. And those are really serving as the bridge as these new technologies advance and we can utilize them at the times that we need them when maybe they're not producing as much as our customers demand. So in 2023, um, our numbers were very vast. This is all of our generation portfolio. We keep it diverse because we don't wanna rely on one resource. We don't wanna pass on a bunch of um, fees onto our customers because one resource 
is more costly that year. So we keep it diverse and you'll see nuclear, coal for a little bit longer, um, renewables, that includes our residential rooftop solar, and then energy storage systems. And then in there is also our customer programs that I've already meant, that I said I would go over here shortly. There's two columns and the nameplate capacity is really in a perfect world, these resources will provide us that much power. I don't know about you, but it's not a perfect world and it's not a perfect anytime, anything. So we really look at the peak capacity that we can generate from those facilities. And that number is from last year. It'll be boosted quite a bit for this upcoming year because we do see a lot of growth on our system from economic development and um, residential um, development coming online. And so making sure that we're planning and looking at what's coming online as we're looking at the future. So how do we figure out what we need in our generation portfolio? It's based on our peak resource and demand that we look at trends, we look at customer demands and look at what we need to plan for. So we can, this is again, 2023, it'll be about 300 megawatts for this upcoming summer that we need. So we've added that to our generation portfolio. As you can see, 2021, 2022, we're pretty consistent. And 2023 had a big jump. We look, we're gonna have another big jump this year. And to put it in perspective, that's all in megawatts. One megawatt feeds about 130, 150 homes. So we are really producing the power, but that is, not why we're here today, but making sure we have enough power is helpful to make sure that we have reliable grid, a safe, strong, reliable grid. So our transmission and distribution teams, these are our operations folks. Um, safety is at, at the utmost importance to APS and making sure that our employees are prepared for anything that comes at them. They're ready for the heat to, so they can stay hydrated, that we have enough crews on hand to deploy linemen to work during the hours, but then if it's extended, we can't have them working for 12 hours. That's gonna lead to mistakes. So we make sure that we have crews ready to go to transition out so we have our top guys working on your lines, getting you power as soon as you can. During October to May is really when we are maintaining our lines, making sure we're planning for those summer heated months looking at all of our lines, and you saw how many lines we have, how many miles and how many substations. So we are constantly monitoring those and looking at what opportunities we can upgrade to prevent any extended outages if a weather event should happen. And during those months, you may receive a notice that says, you know, APS needs to take a little bit of outage. And that is important because that's so we can do that maintenance during that time. Otherwise, if they're in the summer months, we need to maintain that line. It could create um, some extra power, uh, a lot of heat on our system and create other outages. So making sure that our equipment is prepared as well as our employees is important to us. If there is an outage, we go, we really look to our customers to report it. We may not even be aware of it until we hear from our customers. And so making sure that you have the outage map, um, the application, the app on your cell phone or go online, call our customer care center, please report these outages because we'll know which feeders to look at. And even if you think your neighbor reported it, please report it too, because that helps us make sure that we're looking at the right infrastructure. So when we get one of those outage notifications, our, we send a crew out and they go and inspect the line. And depending on what they find, they'll report back. We'll get the equipment needed. We'll get the guys out ready to install new equipment or fix the line and update our outage map. And that's where you'll find how long it, we think it'll take to restore power. That's where I get my information, even as an employee from APS. I keep the app downloaded. I look there to see how long we think customers will be out if it's been updated within a couple hours because maybe another weather event is coming and it's really windy so our crews are having a difficult time to make those corrections. So just making sure that I keep updated on that is helpful because if it turns into an extended outage and we know customers are without power for hours on end, we have to work with our emergency management partners. We wanna make sure that our customers know where to go to stay cool in those um, cooling stations 
that our partners stand up year round or during those summer months are really what we rely on. So we work with our emergency management partners to make sure that we're delivering resources when needed. So not really um, pertaining to this, this area, but up in the um, mountains where we see a lot of forest areas, we make sure and make sure that there's not any trees growing within our lines, around our poles. We keep a safe distance because we don't want to contribute to a longer forest fire if that should occur. So we work, we have a fire mitigation plan that we work with public safety and other agencies to make sure that they're ready, that we have this communication line set up in case of an event. So that's what we go over every March as a company, making sure that everybody's aware of who needs to be on call, when you need to be on call, and what you need to be prepared for. So emergency management, as I mentioned, we really rely on our external partners. The fire departments, um, emergency managers across the valley, we really rely on these partnerships and we do drills together. We make sure that everybody's practicing so that in case of an emergency, we are prepared. So we have those plans. We have plans if we have to shred load. And so um, making sure that if we have to take power from customers, it's not the customers that really need that need it the most, like a wastewater treatment. We don't want to turn off wastewater or water um, facilities. So working with specific partners to turn off power to give us a little bit relief. Um, also, if something were to happen with one of our generation facilities and it goes down and it's cold, it's called a black start where we have to start it from zero and let it warm up. And we can't warm it up too quickly because that'll put a lot of stress on our system. So making sure that we're doing it safely and making sure we're getting customers online as quickly as possible, but maybe in key areas or as um, slowly as we can. So we're not creating any more damage. But what we want to do is focus on the customer. And that's why after the pandemic, we started a 24 seven customer care center. And so that phone number that I have listed up there, you can also find it online, is a care center that you can call 24 seven to find out about an outage, to ask about a bill, to ask for assistance programs, ask about solar, whatever you have interested, they have the resources to connect you to who would be able to talk to you about those details. As I mentioned, the outage map is a huge resource for us. And so making sure that you have that downloaded, reporting your um, outage if you have one, and um, that's constantly being updated. We just updated the system, I believe, last week, and so it's ready to be deployed for the summer. Um, hopefully it's more user-friendly. And then um, we're working on some customer care open houses. Those are where we can come into the community, have some face time with our customers, and answer some questions. And I'm working on scheduling one for this area soon. This is rolling out and it's statewide, so really slow rolling these, but hopefully this is my priority area that I want to have an open house at. And then the heat relief and energy efficiency are also great opportunities for our customers. There's a lot of information on here. I'm not going to read, read through everything, but it can also be found at APS.com slash outage. It's a very pretty display. You just click on the columns and all the information gets shown. But I do want to highlight a few things. We really encourage you to have your APS account number readily available. If it's in your phone and your phone dies, then make having it written down somewhere that's accessible so then we can look at it and help you out if you need it. Um, having a phone charger. If you haven't visited our APS table, if we still have some, we had portable phone chargers. So then if your phone dies and you need to call somebody for help or just to contact us about an outage, then um, you can charge your phone. And then some safety tips, um, making sure that you stay 100 feet away from any down power lines. If you see down power lines and poles, please stay about 100 feet away and call 911 and then call us. 911 will probably call us too. But, and then we can come out and make sure that they get fixed. If you have a medical device, um, some equipment and for you or your loved one in your home, we want you to register it. And it's not because we're nosy, but it's because then if we do have a planned outage, that is coming to your area, we can give you some additional notice. So then you can plan to make sure that your equipment is ready, readily available during that time. So our, I always put this screenshot of this, of the website, just because it, 
it's kind of confusing. It, if you don't require energy support as one of our assistance programs, you can still get medical care and um, be a medical care customer. And so just making sure that you're aware of that. We have a lot of assistance programs and I won't go through them in depth, but all of these are listed at APS.com slash assistance. For those that qualify, you can talk to our customer care folks. You can look online to see what we have to offer. Um, we also partner with a lot of state utility assistance programs and other organizations like um, Foundation for Senior Living or Arizona Faith Network. And so those partnerships, if our website's not up to date today, it will be by next month where there's links that you can connect to as well. Um, some of the programs that I talked about, one main one is this cool rewards program, and it goes on during the summer months. You just have to purchase a smart thermometer, enroll in this program. You get about $30 off your mo monthly bill for enrolling, and it just allows us to control your thermostat. It's not scary, I promise, but we'll turn it up if we need it. But Here's the thing, if you have guests over or it's too hot for you, you can override it at any time. And so we really encourage customers to enroll in this program because you can help us keep reliability going strong throughout the summer months. There's a couple other resources that you can find on our website at APS.com um, to look at what your energy use is and perhaps how you can save, um, be more efficient in your home. Um, and just wanted to highlight those two as well. In summary, that was a lot, but we just wanna make sure that you guys are feeling com confident in APS and making sure that we are prepared for whatever nature throws at us. If a mylar balloon gets into our lines and creates an outage, I never thought that would happen, but it is very common. Um, so just making sure that you're confident that we are working behind the scenes to make sure that customers are receiving their power reliably, especially during those summer months. So that is what I have to share today. If you have any questions, happy to attempt to address them. Um, if you don't, then I will be outside as well. Okay, there's questions for Tesco. Go ahead and say your question and I'll respond. Uh, why the private talk? Uh, so one of the, in of the, emergency preparedness here, uh, one of the things you hear on TV or hear as a possible emergency is uh, a hack through the internet and that the power grid is one of, uh, you know, vulnerabilities there. What is APS doing to uh, prevent that? Well, it starts with our employees. So as an employee, I have to go through a quarterly training for cybersecurity every or quarter, and then make sure and pass it. And then we also get tested. The company sends out these messages. If we click on a link that we're not supposed to, we get dinged. We have to go through the training again. If we do that so many times, we don't have access to the internet. So we take it very serious. And that's at the employee level. And then at the management level, there's a lot of conversations that are high level that I'm not privy to, but I know that we're constantly looking at cybersecurity and preparing for any threats that come onto our system. What other questions? Kate? Thank you. Uh, do you know if there is a cooling station available, APS cooling station available for Sun City West? Well, I should have looked that up before I came here. Yes. But if you go to mag.com, and I can get this information out to Jennifer, but there's a map of across the valley where cooling stations are stood up during the summer months, and those are put on by our partners. We are the experts in restoring power. We're not the experts in providing services to customers. So like I said, we definitely value our partnership and those customers that stand those cooling stations up. And when we do have an outage, and a cooling station is stood up, it's found on the outage map. You're welcome. Sanchez. Thank you. Jessica, great job. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm with the City of Surprise, as you know. We love working with you and partnering with you. Um, good question about the, the cooling stations. Uh, we need more of those in our Northwest Valley. So if you're a part of a, a faith community or uh, local organization. Um, there's an easy way to get uh, registered for those heat relief 
Uh, we in the City of Surprise have several heat relief uh, um, cooling centers, and so thank you for bringing that up. I just want to say we're, we are, serve as the uh, utility assistance uh, helpers um, for Sun City West, Sun City, Surprise, El Mirage, Waddell Wigman. So if you know of anyone that needs a little bit of help, we, uh, APS does a phenomenal job helping us with bill assistance. There's, you can apply online. We have people to help you apply online. If you need, if you know of anyone that needs help paying their, their utility bills, not APS only, but all of your utility bills, we have staff to be there ready for you. And then also um, we, we had too many people across the valley lose their lives from heat related illness last year. And over half of those people had we're living in a home, they just didn't have their air conditioning on or working. And so if you know of anyone that their air conditioning unit goes out, Maricopa County has a program to help you repair, repair that. So there's income qualifications and we'll send that to you, Jennifer. Um, but uh, please keep an eye out for your neighbors and if they're, if they're not running their air on purpose because they either can't afford to run the air or it's broken, there are programs out there to assist and APS has been a great partner in that. Um, so thank you, Jessica. Oh, thank you. So lots of great resources there. Um, I wanted to also mention that if, as Seth said, if you're with an organization that um, might wanna provide shelter services or cooling center services, um, American Red Cross also helps with that. So you can stop at their, their booth and get Cecilia's contact information, our first speaker, because she works with all of that as well. So thank you. And Seth, your department has a table in the Resource Center as well, so they can provide that utility assistance. Okay, perfect. What other questions do we have for Jessica? I either really bored you or answered all your questions. <laughs> Yes. Thank you very much, Jessica. Let's all thank Jessica. No, thank you all. I appreciate it.